Today I'd like to discuss what I think is a really good natural protocol for both myocarditis as well as autoimmune myocarditis. There is a lot of recent videos on the internet that you can find out on potential causes of this disorder, whether it's viruses, from medication, from a vaccine, from some toxin. So I'm not going to get into that. What I do want to talk about is what to do naturally, um, what are some alternative things that you can try, and why you should try certain things. Now, the problem with myocarditis in the first place is we have this inflammatory condition in the heart muscle, which can then lead to fibrosis, which can then give you a whole list of additional problems from dizziness to shortness of breath, chest pain, the inability to exercise, chronic fatigue syndrome, irregular heartbeats, and the list goes on and on and on. So when researching this topic, uh, I found a good amount of research on several remedies that I want to discuss in order of what I think is important. And the first remedy is called Japanese knotweed. Okay, this is an invasive weed that spreads all over the place, yet it has some really interesting properties. Number one, it has resveratrol, which we all know is an anti-aging phytonutrient, but it also has something else called emodin. Okay, what is that? That is a natural chemical. It decreases inflammation and also it's antiviral. And so that would be the first remedy I would recommend. And as far as dosage goes, whatever is recommended on the label, I would just take that just one time per day. Now, the next most important thing to take is a type of vitamin E that is not tocopherol called tocotrienol, okay? And it's not just tocotrienol, it's tocotrienols. It's, there's several different types. So you want to get a blend. There's the alpha, beta, delta, gamma without the tocopherols. Now, the question is why? Tocotrienols has some very interesting properties. It can help inhibit fibrosis. So if you have inflammation in your heart muscle, um, the worst thing you can get is scar tissue. So this can potentially help prevent that formation. Plus, it has a powerful anti-inflammatory action. So combining decreasing inflammation as well as stopping the conversion from inflammation to fibrosis is a really good thing. And tocotrienols also has been studied on the inside of the artery as well. But in this situation, we want it to act on the heart muscle, the myocardium. The problem with mixing tocotrienols with tocopherol is they both will have a tendency to compete with each other. So we don't want that. We want the tocotrienols only without the tocopherols because tocotrienols are roughly about 50 times stronger. And when we're dealing with myocarditis, we want to do whatever we can to put out the fire. And whatever it says on the back of the label, I would recommend times three, okay? And you would just take it three times a day, morning, afternoon, and night. And if you could take it with a little food or a little bit of oil, okay, like olive oil or coconut oil, it will absorb much better. And number three, vitamin D3. Why? Because vitamin D3 is the most potent vitamin for inflammation. It's not really even a vitamin. It's like a natural hormone that has very strong anti-inflammatory properties. And we're trying to put out this inflammation. So vitamin D3 is essential. And it's also really good for any type of autoimmune disorder as well. I would recommend taking it in 10,000 IU units uh, twice a day. So it'd be a total of uh, 20,000 IUs per day. And you just split it up. Take 10,000 I use in the morning and 10,000 I use in the evening. And so vitamin D3 kind of acts like cortisol, but without the side effects. Because one of the medical treatments for this is steroids because they're trying to get rid of inflammation. So by taking the vitamin D3, you're kind of having this steroid effect without the side effects. All right, the next remedy is called olive leaf extract. You know about the olive oil, you know about olives, but this is something in the leaf. And there's a compound called oleanolic acid. But there's some great research on mice showing a significant benefit on autoimmune myocarditis. Olive leaf extract is both anti-inflammatory as well as antiviral. I recommend it to people that have viruses in general, but uh, for this condition, it's a really good natural remedy with 
very minimal side effects. All right, and the last remedy I'm gonna recommend, and it's called cardiotrophin PMG. And I would recommend taking one before bed. Now, why would I recommend cardiotrophin PMG? Because it has extracts of actual animal heart tissue. You're gonna take that into your stomach. The antibodies that you have, they're attacking your own heart, will go after this decoy in your stomach and hopefully reduce the antibodies that are attacking your own heart. So it's kind of a strategy of having this decoy and rerouting these antibodies to reduce the inflammation or the attack on your own tissues. Now, is there any scientific studies that show that this will work? Absolutely not. It's just my theory that it may help you. You might wanna try it. You really have nothing to lose and it could potentially help you. Now, I would also recommend not exercising of any significant amount because there's damage to the heart and there's inflammation in the heart and you don't wanna stir that up. Uh, maybe some very light walking, but nothing of any high intensity because we have a situation where the heart can never rest. It always has to work and it's inflamed. So we want to reduce inflammation. And this is why you would also want to do at the same time uh, the healthy version of the ketogenic diet where you're eating just really healthy foods that are naturally anti-inflammatory as well as doing just regular intermittent fasting. So you're not snacking, you're not doing prolonged fasting, but you're doing just regular intermittent fasting where you're fasting for a period of time. Um, that alone is gonna help reduce inflammation. So there you have it. What I think is a really good protocol for um, either myocarditis or autoimmune myocarditis. Now, since we did touch on tocotrienols and the importance of tocotrienols for the heart, I think this next video would be the best video for you to watch. Check it out. I put it up right here.